such a pleasure to be here. I'm going to try to condense 52 marathons in 52 weeks into 10 minutes. So <laughs> um, it, it really is an honor to be here, and I know we're all here because in one way or another we've been touched by pancreatic cancer. And let's see if my clicker is working. Good. It is. And um, I know firsthand how difficult and how painful that struggle can be. Uh, pancreatic cancer touched my life in a very, very profound way. And um, actually, I'll take you back a little bit. It, back in my, my 30s, here I am with my kids, overweight. And even though I'm smiling in this picture, honestly, deep inside, I felt like life was really hard. I really just wasn't living. I was stuck. Something in my life was missing. And, and what I did, instead of acknowledging that voice within, I would, I would fill that void with a lot of comfort food. OK, this is me overweight back in 2007. And it wasn't until I went on a vacation with my family in Kauai that I started running. I was running on the beach, felt this beauty around me, started to feel alive again. Here I am running. I'm still overweight, but happy, feeling alive. And I'm like, you know what? When I get back to Santa Monica, I am going to continue. And I'm going to continue to run. And so I did. And I kept that packed, but I did one better. And I actually got off of these supercharged antidepressants that I was on. And let's click if we can. And I signed up. I kept running, signed up for my first event. And not only was it good for my soul, but it was also very good for my waistline. And it was an amazing experience. And ever since I started, uh, this was a triathlon, my first event, my father became my biggest fan. And there was a click. Nothing like the joy he got when he would see me run. And he would come out to all my marathons, and he was so proud of me. He would get up in a room like this and tell everybody about what I just, you know, the marathon I just ran, no matter what my time was. And um, he, was, he was so proud. And in this relationship, we, I didn't have the best relationship with him growing up, but the running sort of brought us both together. He was so proud of me. And, uh, oh, so I decided to run a marathon, my first marathon. Don't I look happy and refreshed, <laughs> right? <laughs> OK, maybe not. Let me tell you, this is the, um, I ran a half marathon. I said, what's stopping me from running a full 26.2 marathon, right? So in 2008, I ran the LA Marathon and made all the beginner mistakes. I went out too fast, and at mile 14, I hit the, hit the wall. And for those of you who don't know what hitting the wall is, so let me give you an example. It's an awful feeling. It's like you've got your car in neutral, you're revving on the gas, you hear the engine rev, nothing moves, nothing. It's an awful feeling, especially when you still have 12.2 miles to get to the finish line, OK? But um, I'm happy to say that I did finish. And while I was running all these uh, marathons, I'm like, heard about the Boston Marathon. And I'm like, what, the Boston Marathon? found out not only is it the oldest marathon in the country, but you also have to qualify to run it. So I'm like, I can do that. I only have to take an hour off of my time. You know, a piece of cake, right? <laughs> so I kept running marathon after marathon after marathon, and my dad was so proud. He didn't, you know, he was just my biggest fan. It was awesome, and we were having fun. And he's like, did he qualify yet? I'm like, no. He's like, that's OK. Just keep going, Julie. You're going to do it. And. Um, I got to about marathon number 18, and I missed Boston by two minutes. And I was disappointed, but, but not nearly as disappointed as I, was, I would be the next day when my mother called to tell me that my father had been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer, and there was nothing the doctors could do. And I was devastated, but yet determined. At the time, I had no idea what pancreatic cancer was. The only thing that I knew is that you don't survive. Uh, but I went online and I started researching, you know, what is pancreatic cancer? And I, I um, you know, found out all these statistics that I'm not going to take you through all of them because we all know it's a hideous disease and awful. And I'm not going to take you through all of them because we know they're awful. But you can read them here. And I think these are actually growing. Um, there's my father, larger than life personality. Um, you know, I, I, I looked at these statistics. I didn't look good for my dad, but I said, you know what? You're going to beat this thing, and I'm going to qualify for Boston. 
And sadly, 35 days after my father's diagnosis, he passed away. 10 days after he passed away, I ran that race. I had a race coming up. I ran that race, and I qualified for Boston. And I did not do it alone. I ran that race with my father, and I knew in my heart we had done it together. And here I am crossing the finish line with my hands up in the air pointing to him in heaven. So from that day forward, uh, I realized that, you know, if, if, your goal doesn't challenge, if, if your goal doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change you. And that was my truth. Just a few years prior to this, my life was off course. I lacked purpose, a north star. And after everything I had learned about pancreatic cancer, I knew that I had to do something big, something big to make a difference in this world. So I said, I know. I'm going to run 52 marathons in 52 weeks. Yeah, crazy? A little bit, but crazy good. So I got online. I, I had my schedule picked up. I, I was so inspired. I had my schedule picked out in about three hours. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I had a full-time job, kids, but I was like, I'm going to do this thing. And so off I went. And the first marathon was in Rome. Rome, Italy, uh, marathon number one of 52. And when I crossed that finish line, I was one down, 51 to go. <laughs> <laughs> I was also very, very fortunate to be uh, in the documentary called The Spirit of the Marathon 2, which is available on iTunes. It's, I was one of the seven featured runners in that movie. Beautiful, inspirational movie for runners and non-runners as, as well. So um, here's some of the more challenging marathons I ran, like Lake Tahoe Triple, back to back to back, three marathons in three days. Um, here's me sneaking into Central Park because when I got to run the New York Marathon, they canceled it. So I was going to run it anyways, <laughs> but uh, I, I couldn't do that. I hopped on the next plane back, and I got back to California, and I ran another marathon in Santa Clarita. Nothing could stop me, not even Superstorm Sandy, okay? So we kept going. We kept the dream alive. And uh, here I am, a midnight marathon. I ran all night, and I crossed the finish line as the sun came up behind me on what would have been my father's 77th birthday. This picture actually ended up in Oprah's magazine, so there's a silver lining there, beautiful shot. And here I am in the Colorado River, soaking my aching muscles after a race, and I thought to myself, here is where I thought, you know, on a physical level, these marathons are challenging, and I was sort of having fun, but in order for this journey to be a success, it had to be about the people. It was much more than the marathons. This was about the people fighting for their lives, and I wanted to know these people. So I reached out to people battling pancreatic cancer, and they began to reach out to me, which is when I started dedicating all of my marathons to people affected by pancreatic cancer. Uh, for instance, um, Jackie, his, her uncle Paul there, um, he met me at mile 26, and we ran across the finish line together, and it was a beautiful moment, and sadly, he passed away just a month after this picture was taken. And then there was um, Steve Hanslick. That's actually his sister and mother there. His sister shaved her head in solidarity for her brother Steve, who was going to come out and celebrate with me at my 52nd marathon celebration. He didn't make it. He was too sick and sadly passed away just a couple months later. He was only 49. And uh, Molly Sereno, I dedicated marathon number 51 to. Molly is an amazing athlete, a triathlete, an Ironman, actually. She would train somehow while still on chemo, okay? Uh, and she, would, she completed an Ironman. Nothing would stop this girl, 40 years old, two kids. Nothing would stop her except pancreatic cancer. She passed away last year. And then it was finished. The LA Marathon 2013. I finished running 1,362.4 miles of fighting pancreatic cancer. It, it was quite a journey. We also raised uh, over $250,000 in the fight. And let me tell you, I wasn't just running marathons, OK? I was also working full time. So what I would do, I would like run a marathon, like you said, on a, on a Sunday. So I would, as soon as the marathon was over, I'd hop back on a plane and get to work Monday morning. I would do this for an entire year, leave Friday or Saturday, hop on a plane, go run, come back. 
So a lot of coffee was involved there. <laughs> a lot of coffee, but a lot of hope and a lot of faith. And these people that I was running for are what kept me going. And at the end of the marathons, I carried these two purple balloons through uh, with me through the entire marathon, and I let them go. And one was for my father, and one was for all, all of the people who I had run for and all of the people who I had touched through this journey. And there's Lupe Romero, a pancreatic cancer survivor who crossed the finish line with me. And a couple more survivors that um, Roberta Luna, who was never a marathon runner, decided to go ahead and run a half marathon. And then uh, Lupe also just recently completed a full 26.2 mile marathon. And so while survivors are rare, they do exist, and it's important to keep the hope alive. And if you guys sign up for a marathon, don't blame me. Okay, you can, <laughs> it could happen. Um, what's next, you may be wondering, and you know, sometimes I'm thinking about it too while I look for my next big inspiration. I, I reflect on all of the lessons that I learned during these marathons, and perhaps one of the um, most important to me was that uh, may you always do what you're afraid to do, but to remember Whatever you do means so much more when you do it for someone else. So live boldly, live big, and know that you've got to touch your own life first before you can touch the lives of others. We got this. Woo!